she was a kind and gentle pretty young woman, considered to be a real life yandere in Japan, however. Nobody could have predicted her future actions, and guys, what she did was <sighs> unbelievable. In this video, we're looking into the case of Yuka Takaoka and her unfortunate victim, Phoenix Luna. I'll explain the definition of yandere shortly, and with that being said, get comfortable and relax, and let's get into it, shall we? This case takes us to Tokyo, in Japan. The year was 2018, in October, when 21-year-old Yuka Takaoka moved to Shinjuku City. Yuka Takaoka was living her ultimate life, or at least by modern-day Western standards. She decided to drop out of university at age 19 and become a manager of a hostess bar in Shinjuku. Hostess clubs and bars are very popular in the nightclub industry of East Asian countries, mainly hiring beautiful looking female employees to serve drinks and provide light-hearted and intelligent conversation with male customers. Now, Yuka was a huge fan of anime, an East Asian style of animation genuinely aimed at both children and adults. She was so much of a fan, in fact, she would confidently post regular pictures of herself dressed up cosplaying as some of her favorite characters on Twitter Facebook and Instagram. These photographs and profiles are still up and running online even today. She came across to others as a shy and gentle individual, but would soon grow in confidence the more she got to know you. All in all, she was very laid back and very likeable, and not the kind of person you would expect any problems from. Anyways, back to anime. One of her favorite types of cosplays was of Yandere's character, a specific type of personality. Yandere's are genuinely kind and nurturing lovable women that eventually change over time, turning violent and possessive over a lover's interest. Can you see where this is heading? That same year, in October, while still working at the hostess bar, she met a 20-year-old man named Phoenix Luna. He was also a host, working in a local host bar called Fusion Nightclub. Host bars are the same as hostess bars, only hiring employees to serve the female customers. And Phoenix Luna, he was on top of his game. He was a very popular host in Shinjuku and would often win first place in the bar's leaderboard. Statistics show that almost 90% of his female patrons return in for bantering company and his calming conversations. Now, I just want to say at this point that this is not dangerous work and host bar and hostess bars are strictly clean and above board, at least officially. The pair shared things in common, Yuka and Phoenix working in the same industry. They understood each other well, and from a professional stance with their late night schedules both matching, making it easy for the pair to find lots of time outside of work hours to connect as friends. And it was due to these reasons over the following weeks and months that the pair grew closer to each other, and eventually, they started dating. Their relationship wasn't perfect, though the matching hours did give them more time to see each other. However, their job roles did create just a little more tension between the two, as Yuka and Phoenix both working in the same industry, their professional roles designed to generate money through conversation flirting. It posed a high risk for the green snake to take a big bite, jealousy. And uh, yeah, that didn't work out too well for Yuka because over the following weeks and months, Yuka grew more and more controlling and possessive over Phoenix. She would often track his whereabouts and even check up on his phone when he wasn't looking. She grew so heavily increasingly jealous over Phoenix that she would eventually straight out buy services from the bar, paying over 9,000 a month just so he wouldn't interact with other women at the bar. Somewhat odd and strange, you might think. Fast forward just six months, and the date is now the 23rd of May in the year of 2019, just four months after the pair started dating. Things were going pretty well for the two, and despite a few tensions here and there, the two were happy. Yuka was still managing the hostess bar, and business was great. And so she decided to take a couple of days off work and sort some things out at her apartment. She decided to ask Phoenix to drop by her place to help her with some DIY, in which he said, okay. Although he did arrive much later than expected, purely because it was a very long shift at the bar that night. And when he arrived, he was exhausted. He asked if he could run himself a hot bath to relax in, and of course she said yes. And 
Once he climbed into the bathtub, he fell asleep. During that time though, Yuka would once again go snooping through her boyfriend's phone, and while doing so, she found a few photographs of him with another woman. And it's safe to say that she didn't have a clue. She didn't know who this other woman was. And it couldn't have been a client because she had bought him out already. This uncomfortable discovery only enraged Yuka. And she would also notice that over the past couple of days or so, he'd been quiet and distant with her. And now armed with these newly found photographs, she came to the conclusion that these pictures were solid evidence that he was cheating on her. Now, what would you do in this situation? You would most likely confront your partner, especially if you were suspicious over a photograph, no doubt discussing further problems in the relationship or just simply asking if everything's okay. But no, not Yuka. She didn't roll that way. By the time Phoenix woke up in the bath, he put on some underwear and then he crept into the bedroom and carefully slid into the bed. A cute gesture and try not to wake up Yuka, who was supposedly already asleep. Now, because he was already so exhausted from all the work he'd been doing over the past week or so, as soon as his head hit the pillow, he passed out pretty much instantly. Some time had passed, when all of a sudden Phoenix felt an uncomfortable feeling coming from his stomach. He looked down and that's when he saw a knife being lodged into his gut. Waking up in shock and horror, he looked up only to see Yuka, who was arched over him, pushing the blade deeper into his stomach. And in completing out a shock by this time, running on pure adrenaline, he shoved her off the bed and he ran out the bedroom. Yuka then chased Phoenix, grabbing him by his arm as he left the front door, but with him being taller, he was also much stronger and he pushed her away as he reached the elevator. And by now, Phoenix was losing mass amounts of blood. And as the elevator doors opened up to the lobby, he lunged forward, almost making it to safety. And that's when he lost consciousness. Yuka caught up with Phoenix as he lay collapsed on the floor in the hotel lobby with blood pooling around his body. And by now, passers-by had noticed the horrific scene unfolding and the police were called immediately. But Yoko wouldn't leave his side as she sat there next to his body and people were scared to get too close in case she did something back to them. And the following picture is what made this case so notorious. By the time they got there, police found Yuka sat next to his body drenched in his blood and casually smoking a cigarette whilst being on the phone to her friend. In the time it took the police to get there, she had already written a letter in his blood, repeatedly saying, I love you, I love you, over and over again. The Tokyo Metropolitan Police arrested Yuka immediately. They would also find the letter she wrote in his blood, along with the knife that she used to stab Phoenix in her apartment. And when the officer asked her, why would you do this? What made you do this? She replied with, I was sad and seeking to die. I thought, if I kill him, I can be with him. I thought the expression, I like you and I want to be with you, would become a reality if we both died together. Yeah, that's my Badu account closed. Numerous witnesses watched on in pure horror as they witnessed the police escort Yuka into the back of the police car. And when she was inside the car sitting on the back seat, there she was, smiling. And as for the victim, Phoenix Luna, well, he was still alive, but only barely. Following the speed in which the police and paramedics got to the apartment, unbelievably, he had not yet passed away from his injuries. He was immediately transported to the local hospital where he remained in critical condition with only a 20% chance of survival. And on July the 1st, an entire month after he was stabbed, everyone was quite surprised. Phoenix Luna was alive and in recovery. He soon tweeted his friends and fans to say, sorry, I'm alive and back. Before adding, since I was stabbed in the liver, I can't drink. Being a survivor of a horrific experience, Phoenix agreed to attend a local interview. And in that interview, 
He refused to show any hate towards Yuka, and when asked, he said, I, I don't want to hold any grudges. And he even pleaded with the judge to reduce her sentencing. And on Thursday, the 5th of December in the year of 2019, Judge Justice finally served Yuka to serve just three years and six months for attempted... Wait, did I just say that right? Yep. Three years, six months. And on Thursday, the 5th of December in the year of 2019, Judge Justice finally sentenced Yuka to serve just three years and six months behind bars for attempted murder. Phoenix Luna previously made an emotional settlement for her to pay him 5 million yen. That's the equivalent of 47,000 US dollars as a means of reducing her time behind bars. At a hearing, the Judge Justice publicly stated, If possible, I want people to be able to learn from their mistakes and lead a normal life rather than paying for their sins. And the story doesn't quite end there. Following Yuka's attempted murder and imprisonment, she grew an entire online community of fans, most of which are invested into anime culture and possessed a deep admiration for her, hailing her as if she was a real life Yandere. Her fans believed that she didn't need to be condemned for her actions, only rehabilitated. And get this, her fans actually went ahead and set up a GoFundMe style campaign. And even though the campaign was shut down at the time, she was receiving 3,800 from around 69 tributors, almost the amount of money needed to get her out of prison. Following Yuka's crime of attempted murder, she's now been released from prison in the May of 2023. And that's the full story of Yuka. Takaoka. I feel really conflicted about this case. On one hand, I appreciate the admiration and kindness of Phoenix for not holding any grudges. But at the same time, attempted murder is... Attempted murder? Like, three and a half years? Really? Anyway, there you go. Another case. But this one finishes with a slightly different and unusual outcome. <laughs> So what do you think about Yuka's sentencing? Do you think it wasn't enough? Or do you believe she got the rightful time she deserved? And what do you think about her fan base? Let me know what you think about this case in the comment section below. And just for the record, Tokyo and Japan in general is incredible. If you ever get the opportunity to visit, take it. You won't regret it. And guys, thank you once again for watching this episode of When Evil Follows. Subscribe if you haven't already, and don't forget to hit the like button. And as I always say, Please stay safe, look after yourself, and I'll see you again the next time when evil follows. Goodbye.